Daisy, come on. Look at, where are you going? <laughs> Daisy's trying to run away from me. It's been a busy couple days. Yeah, come on in. <laughs> you're huge. Yeah, he is you're a like big white boy. Fang. What the heck, you're ginormous. <laughs> We've got a full house. This is another time I could use a third hand. <laughs> We're getting it done, but it's a little chaotic. He's gonna have to be on a leash. Yeah, I just have a dog that's in heat. Oh gosh. My dog, Bindi, is in heat. We do have to be really careful. Any male can kind of find her by the smell. Come here. OK. Sorry, sorry. Bindi, come here. Bindi, time to go inside. Come on. Uh-oh, Bindi is loose. Come on, Bindi. Go in there. We'll get the snow off you. It's a lot of work to keep an intact female. Oh, that was not fun. <laughs> When they come into heat, it can last a couple of weeks. Yeah, my girl's in there. She's not fixed. Everyone's leaving their pee mail today. There's a lot of male dogs out that are loose. I need an appointment, okay? Go home. So I have to keep a really close eye on her. You need to go for a tinkle? Go pee pee, hurry up. Let's take a break, Bindi. Good girl. Good girl. Don't lose that frisbee, it's white, just like the snow. Bindi is just amazingly smart, and we do plan to breed her soon. It's not gonna be this cycle, which means we have to keep her protected, and then after we breed her the next time, we will spay her. Ah, ah, ah. Bindi, come, Bindi, come. One dog that I worry about with Bindi is Homer Hound. Oh, look who walked in. Hi, come here, buddy. Are you coming for a neuter? That is the hound that brings all the dogs in town. That's why half the dogs in town are, are hounds. Homer's known about town because he is so able to like climb over fences and get in, dig in. Whatever it takes, he's gonna get to that female. He lives about a mile and a half away and he sniffed her out. He's gotten himself into a little bit of trouble and he's also sired at least four litters that I know about in town. <laughs> so there's a lot of hound crosses here. I wanna catch Homer and his dad can come get him. Can you phone Dave Stickler and tell him to come get his dogs? Yep. Before I neuter him? <laughs> yeah. I mean, Homer almost looks like he's here looking for an appointment. So maybe we should just go ahead and oblige him and get him in as quick as we can. Oh, Dave! Sneaking away with Homer. OK. Come on, buddy. Let me do it. Let me in there. I was going to have some pups with him. Well, you've had lots of pups with him, let me tell you. Half this. <laughs> Half this town are Homer dogs. <laughs> Homer's kind of a cool dog. He's a little bit macho. Let's get him in this week, come on. I'm so busy, let me think. You don't have to do it. You're not doing it, I am. Just drop him off. If he shows up, I'll just catch him and do it. How about that? Is that OK? That'll, that'll teach him. <laughs> I just don't want him to lose his personality. I mean, because he's got this image and he's, he, you know, he got his little way of getting around, you know? OK, well. Yeah. Um, give me the time. OK, OK. Guy. You better. I know. You better lick him good tonight. I'm shocked. Dave's actually thinking about it. I'm going to be the town hero. Hopefully, we can get Homer in soon, and Dave won't change his mind. Dave is offering to get him neutered. I would volunteer hours to do this. This is really exciting. You don't understand. Facebook hates chatter. Yeah, this is hate chatter's news. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Your boyfriend's going to get neutered. But good job getting him in. Good job getting him in. Yeah, you lured him right in. Yeah. What a good girl. I'm headed to the Alaska Wildlife Conservation Center today with Sierra and Maya, and we have a lot to do over the next few days. Look at all those cows. It looks like we have a lot of cold weather heading our way, and that's going to make this work really challenging. Ready to hit some bison? Yeah. I think Patsy's going to be happy to have some friends. Yeah, I'm excited for her to have some friends. Patsy is a two-year-old female wood bison. She was super skinny, and the herd was picking on her, so we needed to do something for her, and unfortunately for her, that meant separating her. She's been removed from the herd for a couple months, and she's really added on some weight. She looks really good. So with Dr. Oakley here, we're gonna hopefully grab some other members of the herd and just put them in with Patsy so that they can start their own little herd. Maybe we'll be able to dart them right from the gate. Yeah. 
It just really depends on what the herd does. They're already like red flagged. Why is all this equipment out here? Bison are made to defend themselves. They've got incredible horns that are very sharp. They've got this massive head that's just so solid that they can just swing with tons of force. Then you put 15 of these animals together that weigh 1,500 pounds to 2,000 pounds. I mean, it's like a super beast. That whole herd <laughs> will move as one to chase away anything that's a threat. So it can be pretty daunting working on these guys. What good carols? Yeah, 312, where are you? First, we're gonna start with the cow 312. I'm gonna dart her and we're gonna go in with a loader and actually pick her up with a bucket of loader and drive over to the next pen, put her down, and I'm gonna give her a reversal. She gets up and she's part of Patsy's new herd. Who's that? That's her right there. Where? She's right there. Oh, that is her, okay. Hopefully it'll be an easy darting for Dr. Oakley. We won't have to like kind of get the herd moving too much. It'll be super calm and super chill and that'll help the herd not really get panicked. I'm gonna try and get him to walk this way so I can get her by herself. Me, yeah. Come on, kids. Come on, kids. Move, move you. Go away. Come on. Here we go, here we go. Starts in. Got her darted in the back. And so we're just waiting for her to go down, but trying to keep the others away from her. The wood bison, they have a very strict hierarchy and an intense social structure. Come on. The <laughs> bull just standing there munching. He's so happy. That'd be great. Look, and they just maybe ignore her. Yeah, that's what I was hoping they'd do. We got to be prepared to keep the herd away from the animal, because even a low-ranking animal, if they just drop to the ground, some others might take that as an opportunity to take a cheap shot. She just went down, so that's good. So we have to protect the animal, we have to protect each other, but I think we've got a good plan. Tractor's coming. Now we're just gonna need to ease the loader up. Are you ready? Yeah. One, two, three. Oh, it's literally just a nice scoop. Okay, are you ready for the tractor to curl? You can just curl it, but not lift. I don't know, this might be too small of a tractor. Yeah, this is a big bison. 312. She's creeping up on four years old this summer, so she's a little bit bigger than I thought she was. I think what we might need to do is just people walk. We thought she was smaller. Turning my back on a group of bison isn't exactly my favorite. The bucket on this tractor is so small compared to the bison, but the larger one broke down, so we're kind of in a pickle here. I think we can just walk faster now, but I don't know about Sierra. I can hold, but I can walk faster back. It's going to be a little bit of a slow boat here to move this along and get her to the pen. See if you can, like, grab her foot. OK. Oh, my God. OK, now. Okay, go. OK, go. Try going. You all faster still? Yeah. Kicking it up the gear. Oh, I'm warm now. Yeah. <laughs> Sweating. It is an amazing workout. At the end of today, I suspect we're all going to be really sore. This will be her new home for a couple months. I think we just put her down here. Right here? Yeah, right here. She's doing really good, actually. So we're just going to get her stabilized, do her checkup. Oh, god, she's heavy. Woo-wee. So whenever we get our hands on them, we take blood to check for their minerals, make sure that's OK. We do a ton of disease testing from these guys. Ready, friends? I'm reversing her. I'm pretty excited now that 312 is in the pen. Patsy's been by herself for a few months, so hope, hope she's excited for new friends. Oh, there's Patsy. Oh, hi, Patsy. Look, you get to have a friend. Bison are herd animals. It's just as physiological as food, water, shelter. They have to have, you know, their herd or they will not thrive. Hopefully, Patsy and 312 can bond together and form a great herd. Aww. Oh, my God, how cute is that? Oh. Big girl, good girl. Look at her, she's so cute. Okay, we better do the other one right away. Oh, great. Now the whole herd's gonna be like, no! Oh, yeah, they're watching. We're gonna try and get 343. When we go back in for the second one, it's gonna be even more chaotic. They're totally onto us. Yeah because the herd's gonna be aware of what we're doing. You can see how sharp those horns will like put a hole in your head so fast. Look at the bull, look at the bull fighting the thing. Oh wow. Oh my gosh. You know what we should have done? It's had mom on the tractor. Actually, that's not a bad idea because they're totally skeptical of the snow machine. 
So there's a second bison, a young one, but now they're kind of already riled up, so the herd's going to try to probably run away if we go in on the snow machine. So we're going to go in on the tractor, which usually feeds them, and hopefully they'll fall for it. <laughs> That's all I know is this little. That's her. Oh, that's her. Right here. Great to 343. She went down on time with some really good heavy sedation. She's down. Dang it. Ah, she's down. But now her mother's really agitated. She's trying to push her up. They keep waking her up. They need to get away. And the cows are not having it. They're trying to wake her up. It's getting really dicey. Oh no! They just keep stimulating her. Oh. They'll come in or wait? I've got Sierra and Maya on my sled behind me. I think you're going to have to come now and protect her, because they keep waking her up. Come on, Brittany! Sarah, uh -oh. block her up on the front bird! Block her up! The herd has broken into chaos. Sarah needs to cut the rest of the herd off, and Sierra needs to get the blindfold on. Let me get on the back with you. Watch him, watch him, watch him. Oh, that damn bull makes me so scared. Brittany, get up here! Just knowing how this big group of bison can behave, they will certainly come after us if we were on foot. No, 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 no. Watch, 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 he's gonna... Don't do it. Get him! Suddenly, I fall off the snow machine, and I'm sitting there in the middle of the field with bison, so I'm very scared. She's just out in the open with no protection, and she's trying to get back to a snow machine as quick as possible. Here, here, let me get on the back with you. <sighs> here, we need to put this on her as soon as she goes down. OK. Good girl. You're OK, you're OK, you're OK. So now they're trying to keep her isolated so she can finally go down. Good girl. Good girl, just wait. All right, all right. Just you just keep them away, so Brittany. As soon as she goes down, our number one thing is to limit visual stimulation. She's down again. Go get Oakley. Just hang on. We might. She might just be able to put a thing over her eyes. The only thing I have is my coat, and it is freezing. But it's the only thing that we can really use to make sure she stays down. Good job. Good job. Yep. Perfect. Okay. Now that she's down with a blindfold on, we're just going to give her three or four minutes. Once the adrenaline goes, the drugs will really hit the brain. Can we put a real blind on her? I'm freezing. The towel's in the back. I am so cold. Can you? Yeah. Switch. Thank you. No top up needed. She's nice and quiet. That's good. That'd almost be better. I put her in a sled. 343 is down, and we're basically just going to snow machine okay. Slayer right out to the other pen. So it's going to be a lot faster than using the loader. And she's small enough that we can fit her right in the sleigh. My mask on. It's cold. Oh. OK, how was that? Were you scared for me? Yeah. Of course. I was freaking out. You have frostbite on your cheeks, by the way. I was so cold waiting for you guys because I used my jacket as a blindfold. Sitting there shivering. That was a lot faster. Yeah, so much faster. So now that we've got 343 over into the pen with Patsy and 312, it's just making sure that overall she's healthy and getting her ready to go play with her new herd. OK, let's start poking. I'm going to do the B12 sub Q over here. Covexin is right hind. I think it was the last of the injection. All right, reversing. OK, she's been reversed. Everybody out. We just made a new herd. Look at There's two friends there. And this is friend number three. Nice. Now Patsy's going to be like, ooh, a new one. <laughs> we finally have the new herd together in their pen. They're kind of confused of this new group, but I think it'll be good. We'll have to wait and see. Here comes Patsy to check her out. She's like overwhelmed with company today. Welcome to the middle pen. Um, I've been here for six months. 
It's gonna take time. It's gonna take probably a couple weeks for them to adjust to each other, but it's great that they're gonna have their own little herd here with unlimited access to food. So that'll be really important for them to be growing really nicely over the spring and summer. Oh, look at them licking each other. Oh, little kisses. We've got one more day at AWCC and the temperatures are still well below freezing, but at least we're working with a much calmer herd, the Sitka deer. It's a big deer. Okie dokie. So it's solstice again today, right? Mm -hmm. And I remember we were managing a pretty good lameness in the fall. Solstice is an older deer here. He's a repeat customer. He's had a lot of issues with arthritis in the past. Ouchie bud. He's been holding his foot up quite a bit as well, and that might be a little more than just arthritis and overgrown hooves. There could be an infection, so I'm suspicious. I think today we better just go ahead and bring him right into the infirmary and get some good x-rays. Okay. Which one is it? The one with his ears back. Solstice. He's judging the big, big time. Head. Yeah. With big head. <laughs> We have six Sitka deer. Solstice is the oldest, and he's kind of the ringleader. So everybody kind of feeds off of what Solstice is doing or what he's thinking. And he definitely doesn't like me. He is totally eyeballing you, actually. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. Sitka deer are high on the prey list for a lot of things in Alaska. They're already on alert. So if Sarah shows up, their spidey senses start tingling, and then they get really hard to dart. Bring her the sick of deer whisperer. They seem to like me most of the time. Okay. So how about I get my dirt loaded up and I'll walk in with you, Brittany? Okie dokie. And Sarah's not invited. No. Okay. Sounds like a plan. I didn't want to be invited. Somehow I think they think I'm really the vet. So I'm just going to lurk in the background. Let's go. Come here, buddy. You want him to move somewhere? Yeah, I would walk up to him. Maybe I promise I won't dirt you. Come here, bud. Hey, guys, what's everybody doing? Oh, there we go. Left hip, hopefully injected. These darts can freeze really quickly in a steel barrel. I've got like hot packs, I'm holding it, but it's really cold today, so. I need a, like a face mask. Do you have an extra bell cloth that I can just put on? You put it on as I start. There's cold, and then there's Alaska cold, and then there's working outside in the Alaska cold. <laughs> I have frostbite on my face. <sighs> my eyes hurt right now, even. It's so cold. I refuse to take this off for the rest of the day. <laughs> there he goes. Oh, he's down. OK, he's down. I need the blindfold. Give it up. I'm freezing and my face hurts. You need to come dressed with your balaclava. <laughs> in order to work where we're not all getting frostbite because it's really cold out today. We're actually gonna move him into the infirmary. Uh, okay, ready, lift. Uh, okay, oh my goodness. First things first, I wanna get an x-ray of this foot. Okay, okay. okay. it looks good. Okay. All right, to make sure that there aren't any broken bones or any infection that could be causing the limp. They're looking okay. He's eight, so he's definitely getting up there in years, but I've seen so much worse. Looking at the x-ray, I do see the obvious signs of arthritis, which we know was present in solstice, but it also looks kind of whitish in some areas around the bone. That can be inflammation. We need to start trimming. But you can get bacteria up in there, so it's important that now we dig in there and see what's happening. He's got a crack. Right there, it's like that little hole. And you can see that's the line of the crack. That's the pathway, that super highway for poop and everything to get jammed up in there and then start causing an infection. Ugh, he's kind of stinky. Yeah, that's the, you're smelling some of the stink that I'm getting at to cutting right now. I feel like there's poop jammed up there because yeah. it smells like poop. Oof, I'm starting to smell it. <gasps> Pus. Oh, yeah. Oh, look, it's popping. <gasps> Oh! Look at that. Pus just came out of the end of his toe. So we found an abscess. Oh, no way. I'm so glad that Solstice kind of held up his foot saying, ow, because we have found a solar abscess. And what that is is 
basically a collection of pus that's buried down deep in his foot, like inside the hoof, actually. When you get a crack in a hoof, that cracked hoof is basically a huge highway for bacteria to get up into the hoof. And if it gets far enough in, it gets into tissues that it can eat and can cause infection. Oh boy, it's still going. It's still going. Actually, I'm getting more pus coming out. Whoa. So you see Ooh. that? That's all pus. Some serious toe jam. Ooh, that's pretty. Yeah. This would be so painful, it would definitely cause a limp. No antibiotics in the world are going to fix that until you get that. Dig it out. Dig it out. Oh, that's good. We're getting the blood now. When you see blood after you've seen pus and yuck, that's a good thing. The blood means healing. It's going to bring all your white blood cells to like fight the infection and heal and close up and make a bit of a scab. This one though looks funky. She should check that one out. So we find that Solstice doesn't only have one bad foot. Oh, yeah. Cheese. What? Cheese time. Oh, man. What? There's some goofy stuff on this one, too. Oh, no. He's got three. Phew, this one stinks too. That one's stinky. I'm flinging it off of Sarah's. I know. No offense. It's all going on to you. Is it really? It's not sticking though. Gnarly. If we hadn't opened this up, it's very likely that this would have continued to track in. It would cause infection in the bone. I'm gonna get all the rest of the pus out of there. That looks fabulous. Okay. It also can force it into his bloodstream and he could get septic. So, you know, it was really important that we got this opened up today. I'm just so relieved for him. Okay, friends. So let's get him ready to move. Now that we've got his Manny Petty down, he's gonna feel a million times better and it's gonna heal a lot more quickly. Ready? One, two, three. Oh my God. Nice work. Nice work. We're gonna be giving him antibiotics, so his body will also be fighting the infection from the inside out. Okay, reversing him in his right hind. Once he's feeling better, I think he's definitely gonna be moving around the pen a lot more. Good boy. Oh, good boy. Hi, Solstice. Hi, bud. Okay. He's already like, yeah, see you later. Never again. Good morning, friend. Makes you wanna like look over yourselves and be like, I don't got that, right? <gasps> Makes me want to at least go wash my hands a bit. Yeah. And then maybe I'll get a Manny Petty. We get those nippers out and get all around all, all my piggies. <laughs> I think Sierra and Meyer are totally into that. <laughs> Should we get you out for a pee pee? Okay, come on, let's go for a pee. Come on. It is tough having an intact female dog and having Bindi come into heat twice a year. With the hormones, it definitely can change Bindi's very easygoing temperament. If we left her out here, she would wander away. Bindi. Estrogen especially can just make her a little bit irritable. Put your little pants back on, Mrs. Yeah, your little chastity panties, those need to be on. She has to wear her period panties, the special ones that are really nice and big, and we can put a pad in. Sad little pants. She looks so sad right now. <laughs> Mom, you're talking about my panties. It just cracks me up. <laughs> All that hair is just like balled up in her pants. Hi, Minxie Sue. My name is Pam Randalls, like candles. And this is Minx Randalls. Come on, Minxie, talk. She talks, she just meows. The reason I brought her here today was because she was coughing. I'm concerned because I have tried to figure it out, but she's still coughing and trying to spit stuff up, and I don't know what's going on. Hi, Pam. Hello. What's your kitty's name? Minx. I heard she's been coughing? Yeah. And how long has that been going on? couple of months. Okay. And so I'm, I've become quite concerned. Okay. We'll take her in. I'll give her a good exam and we'll check her out and then we'll chat with you about what we find. Okay. All right. I don't know which of us is more nervous about this. I know Pam is really worried, especially when she sees her cat struggling, you know, to cough and to breathe. I mean, we want to get this figured out and help her along. Hi, Minx. Oh, she's oh. cute. She is cute. There's this huge spectrum of what can cause a cough from hairballs all the way to something like cancer. So it's gonna take a lot of digging. We're gonna need x-rays. I'm gonna need to really thoroughly check out her mouth. Let's have a look at you. Yucky eyes. Ooh. Ooh, you look like you're getting mad at me already. Do you want a burrito? Yeah, yeah I just wanted to see if I could see teeth without getting bit. 
Nope, I'm not gonna be able to. So Minx is understandably not thrilled about being here today. Okay. Oh, I can smell her breath. <laughs> I know, angry girl. Oof, her breath smells horrible. Just as I'm reaching and trying to get a physical, she's hissing. Oh. And we're getting a waft of like a really bad smell. That can mean a sinus infection, it can mean rotten teeth. So that means I'm gonna have to really check out in her oral cavity, like around those teeth that are trying to get me. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh. Nice catch. Thanks. We need to sedate her. Like this is gonna get somebody hurt. We just cannot get bit by those gnarly teeth. She's really feisty. We definitely need some pharmaceutical helpers to complete this exam. Ready? Mm -hmm. This is gonna finish the Sorry, missus. Hang on, hang on, sugar pump. Look, look. Okay, do you wanna just hide with me? Once the sedation kicks in, it'll be easy to finish our exam and get the x-rays. Oh, baby, poor Sandra. Ooh. Oh, I should get bit. It'd be better if I got bit. She just needs a little bit of quiet time to settle down. Cat bites are nasty. Guys, Daisy, come here! What just happened? Is that our dogs? Yes! As we're working on Minx, I hear this big crash and kind of sort of like a dog fight starting. No. No. But it's just Daisy and Bindi. That was very mean and bad. Think about it. That's what hormones do. They do go at it pretty hard, especially when Bindi's in heat. Daisy marched right over and started posturing. Oh, Daisy does. Before I could get to her, she just nailed. Daisy starts it every single time. Daisy just doesn't know when to back down. She definitely will continuously pick at Bindi until Bindi just snaps. When Bindi's in heat, she she goes for it. There's just some slobber on her back. I don't see anything. Just when we were kind of expecting a bite from the cat. Now we've got the wild dog separated, and we've got Minx, the mad cat, sedated. We can hopefully finish this exam without any more outbursts. We can put her over at the x-ray table and just start setting up over there. And now I can finally get a good look in that stinky mouth. You imagine trying to do this while she was away? No. <laughs> <laughs> that breath. My girl. Ooh, that smells so bad. That smells like rotten sinus to me. She's got some rotten teeth. The smell is fit in the picture. I can see that a couple of her molars in the back are really brown and red around the base of them. Probably a little bit of a sinus infection from that. So that is definitely something that would cause a cough. So we found one issue, but we need to check in on all the rest of her organs. Her heart looks OK. So it does not look to be anything in her lungs specifically that's causing the cough. Looking at the x-rays, I do not see signs of feline asthma, which is one very common cause of a cough. No sign of pneumonia or other things in her chest. We don't see any big masses or anything like that. So that's all really good news. I do feel like she's speaking up. She is, yeah. So basically ruling each thing out, we're gonna give her some antibiotics for her teeth and what looks to be a sinus infection. I suspect that irritation is causing a little bit of a cough. Hi, kitty. Do you wanna go see your mom? Tell her about your yucky teeth, huh? All right. And then we're gonna try to get Minx off to get a dental done. Here she is. Hi, Minxie. How are you doing, kiddo? She's doing okay. She's still a little groggy, but she did really good with her anesthesia. The good news is I didn't see any sign of like asthma or pneumonia or any masses in her lungs. Okay. So she definitely needs a dental and that needs to be done probably in the next couple months. For the, what looks to be like an infection, at least kind of like in her nose and in her teeth, we're gonna give you some antibiotics to give her. Okay. okay. To start treating that. I, I feel good about her diagnosis because it wasn't as bad as I feared and she looks okay. She was definitely not letting us do much no, of anything. No, 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 she wasn't. I knew that was going to happen. Uh, I'm happy to have her back with me, and she looks like she's not upset terribly with me, but <laughs> I'll, I'll see that when I get home. Well, thank you very much, ma'am, for bringing her in. Thank you. Been 
ambassador, you got a boyfriend coming. Actually, <laughs> not no boyfriend. Come on, dude. Come on. I'm Dave Stickler, and I brought my dog Homer to get cut. I think he knows. Look at his tail. He's kind of a town dog. Everybody knows him because he gets around. That's the biggest reason he's coming in here today is because he gets in a lot of trouble. He wants in there. There's a dog in heat in there. He made the appointment himself the way it worked out. When you get a call looking for your dog and he's already at the vet, <laughs> It's like, I think the handwriting was on the wall. I, do, I don't need any more omens here to, you know. Dave, you came. I lost a bet. <laughs> you bet I wasn't going to show? <laughs> I almost called you that I wasn't because oh. <laughs> I went to start, start my fire this morning. Yep. And I went back to the house. Homer's gone. This morning? Yep. And so I took off and caught halfway down small track. Here he was. OK, coming. oh, he's probably coming to my house. Your dog's in heat. I took well. her out twice on a leash, and I'm like, if I see Homer, I'm going to take him in right now. <laughs> He'd be easy to find if we know where Homer. the dog in heat is. Oh, my goodness, Homer. You look like you know what's coming. OK, come on, Homer. OK, Homer, see you later. Yeah, some, some goodbye I get from him. I'm probably more emotional than Homer is right now, but you know. It's, yeah, it's it's for the best. Good boy, are you excited? That's where you wanted to go, isn't it? Sorry, I don't want to torture you. I know. Come on, buddy. Quickly. The neuter is going to be pretty much the easiest part of this whole process of getting Homer in the clinic. <laughs> okay, good boy, homie. We're just going to basically sedate him. What a great boy. Good night, Homer. This is the end of an era. He has plenty of puppies around town. Yeah. <laughs> really got his work done. Yeah. <laughs> I know of at least four litters. <laughs> there could be more. Like, literally, the surgery will take probably about four or five minutes. Do you want to lie down? Yeah. Oh, we want to be a little sleepy, aren't we? And he'll be a new man, a new Homer. Hopefully a safer Homer. I keep waiting for Dave to just run through the door. <laughs> Stop. Like, like the graduate. No. Homer, I love you. Dave really loves Homer. I know that he hasn't wanted to get him neutered for a while because he doesn't want his behavior to change. So this is a local block I'm doing. I think the last straw was trying to breed with the vet's dog. <laughs> All righty. Homer, any last words? Is that Bindi crying? Did you guys hear that? I think I just heard her cry. Oh my gosh, Bindi just can't get enough of Homer. Bindi's sad. She's just throwing herself at him. Oh, okay. He's twitching a lot. Homer just had to be difficult. I want to just pause until we get him a little more sedated. The stay of execution. Bindi's almost begging. Bindi definitely got a whiff of him and thought, oh. Bindi is almost through her heat, but I think today she's ovulating. So thank goodness Homer is getting neutered today. Okie dokie. Cutting. Less Homer on the streets is going to make a lot of people happy. And it's safer for Homer, too. Yeah, that's the most important thing. There it is. Number one in the garbage. So he's not going to be running around, and there's less of a chance that he's going to be hit by a car or get into something that he shouldn't. Number two. Woo! Who's going to be the next, like, Kane's roaming dog, I wonder? Probably one of his offspring. Yeah. <laughs> Carrying on the tradition. Homer Jr. Voila! Empty. That is what you call a sad sack right there. Can't believe it. Yep, the date's been done. Homer will be a little bit different, but he will have his personality, his lovingness, all the good sides of him will still be there. Let's go, come on. Oh, you look so mad. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, poor Homer. He's not impressed about the cone of shame. Oh, my God. But he's happy to see you. How long I got to keep that 
lampshade on. So unless you want to come back for another surgery, I would suggest keeping it on for a week. Pretty sure he's going to be licking his wounds or whatever. I mean, every other dog can tell him to get the chop. He's going to deal with it. I'll give you a hug with my mask okay. on. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, million. Yeah, you take yeah. care. Bye, Homer. Having to go find where Homer's at or wherever the local dog and heat is, I won't miss that at all. That ain't going to work very good. <laughs> He is booming. Your own fault, Homer. Nobody to blame but yourself. Hello. Hi, you must be Dr. Oakley. Yes, you must be Hannah. Today we're at Hannah's farm. She has a really nice hobby farm here in Alaska where she has some llamas and alpacas, some chickens, and a really nice setup. So we heard you have some llamas and alpacas. I do, lots of llama drama around here. <laughs> I'll be right back. I just need to grab Stormy's halter really quick. Stormy was born at our farm. She's always been so sweet. She'll be two this summer, so she's kind of a teenager. The last few months, she's just gotten this awful attitude. So what happened to Miss Stormy? The summer when I was having a house sitter, Stormy got out of the gate and decided to run over to Bob. Bob's a llama. Bob's a llama. Okay. And they don't know what happened. They just saw that Stormy was out. Uh-oh. I first started noticing her change in behavior in late July, early August. And then her attitude just got worse and worse and worse. She's a kicker. Yeah. So, <laughs> and a spitter. So that's fun. And she'll jump, too. OK, great. And I've been trying to figure out if it's because she is a teenager now or if she possibly has gotten pregnant. So you want me to preg check her, right? Let's start with that. Holy. You need, like, an attitude check, maybe? This is both an attitude and pregnancy check. Llamas and alpacas can definitely start to become more territorial and aggressive just because they're not feeling good. They don't want anyone nearby. But pregnancy is a well-known cause for these types of behavioral changes as well. She's already going to spit. What a little. I'm having one locked and loaded in the chamber to spit on her first. Alpaca and llama spit isn't just spit. It's more of like a rumen juice. It basically smells like puke. What a weird adaptation, I swear. <laughs> it's not like regular spit, it's like puke spit. So I would rather be kicked. <laughs> it can be real spitty and snarky, but to be sure, we're going to try to ultrasound her. It's a little bright out, so I'm going to put on these virtual reality. I'm going to switch up you so you can protect oh. your eyes from spit. Yes. Is there any way to like kind of hem her against a fence and work her that way so that we at least have like two or three sides? Covered. Stormy is a little tricky to handle because she's not happy anyway, and now we're trying to grab her and get her into a good position to ultrasound her. Oh, I'm going to be the one that's been. <laughs> she's mad. If we just stand her right like this, I can try to get in there. Anytime you're trying to hang on to an animal that does not want to be restrained, it can be a little tricky because, you know, llamas can fling their head around. Easy, 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 easy. They certainly can kick, and I'm reaching down between her legs and hoping she doesn't kick me. She's strong. She is really strong. Stormy, stormy, stormy. Angry mama, llama, drama. Oops, oops. She got a quick kick. Oh. Whoa! Stormy. Got baby in there. I'm trying to get an ultrasound on Stormy, but it's really tricky to get the ultrasound in the right spot. Stormy. Stormy. Oh. Stormy. Stormy. She's showing full on llama drama just because I'm touching her back end. Trying to stay with her during this is not fun. I'm basically trying to ride out the storm, literally, with Stormy and see if I can just stick with her long enough to get the picture. Hold on, sugar. It's OK. We're oh, you're being so good. good. You're being it's so okay. good. Damn. It's all right. It's all right. Hey, easy, girl. I feel like I'm like riding the alpaca in there. OK, now I'm getting a better look. Oh, is there something? Is there? Yes. 
Uh oh. I am seeing movement and fluid. So it's hard with this probe to pinpoint it, but I'm definitely seeing signs of a baby in there. Fetus is moving around. It was a brief and fleeting glance, but it definitely looked like a fetus, so we're gonna call her pregnant. I knew there had to be a reason for your yep. sassy. At least there's a reason. I was like, if there's not a baby in there and she's this sassy, I don't even know what I'm gonna do with her. <laughs> she's really young to be pregnant, so that was, you know, why she wasn't purposefully pregnant. I'm glad to know that there's an end to the horrible attitude and I can have my sweet baby back at least for a little bit before she breeds again. <laughs> so hopefully she does okay. She might need help with the birth. Aww. You can't stop Lama Love. I just uh -huh. have no idea when exactly she's due. I certainly can't tell her the, how old the fetus is or the due date, but I can tell her why she's got such a crummy attitude right now. <laughs> Okay, can I let her go? Absolutely. Because she is a pretty She's over She's so it. mad. I can relate to Stormy because I definitely had my moments when I was pregnant, so I can definitely feel her pain. Wow, she's like right up in your face. She's literally getting ready to spit. Yeah, her. <laughs> See, <laughs> don't spit on me. <laughs> Look at that. Oh. Oh, there goes oh the spit. Oh my gosh, quit it. <laughs> don't do it. I really love Stormy. She is another level of sassy and just mean, but in kind of a charming way. She's so up in people's business. Are you really going to spit on me, like, close up? You're confusing. If I wasn't convinced that I love llamas going into this, I do now, because her sass is just amazing. I kind of love her. Go away, Stormy. Aww. <laughs> and he's from Patagonia. You guys are yeah. both from Patagonia. Yeah. That's Aww. <laughs> she loves They're him. Both she has the softest nose, it's so cute. Uh, she has like fallen in love and is smitten with our cameraman. I mean, she's going up to him and she's kissing him. She's like making out with him. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> it's really interesting to see her big swings in behavior. Wow, oh, awkward. Oh, that was weird. <laughs> Stormy turned out to be lovely to work with. I mean, as much as she was fighting us in the end, she was kind of kissing and making up. Wow. Look at all that. Look at all that love you give me. Some of our animals mess up just like we do, but it's a lot about accepting each other's quirkiness. Don't spit on me. And actually appreciating it and loving it. One of the things I love about Homer, he just does his own thing. Come on, homie. He's a same old Homer. He knows he's missing something, but he, his dream's going, man. He's out being a hound, and Dave is often the proud papa of that wandering hound. Go get him, boy. There's Bindi. When Bindi's in heat, she's just a little bit more difficult to have around. But we find a way to make it work. Hello, beauty. How are you? It's such an incredible but strange relationship that we have with this other species. Oh, you don't need these anymore. You are in the clear. No more heat. Get these panties off of you. I've been so happy to be helping make those relationships go smoother, fixing them when they break, but mostly just being an ambassador for let's get along and let's let our pets get along. Do you want to go play? Should we go outside and play? Get your ball. Let's go play. Come on.